Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Enter the Bible podcast, where you can get answers or at least reflections on everything you wanted to know about the Bible, but were afraid to ask. I'm Katie Langston. And I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And today we have uh, uh, Mary Hinkle Shore, who is an old friend of mine. She uh, was a longtime professor at Luther Seminary, New Testament professor, uh, now serving as a chaplain resident at Charles George VA Medical Center in Asheville, North Carolina, where she lives. Uh, and she uh, very graciously agreed to come uh, and answer some listener questions uh, with us today. So welcome, Mary. Good to see you again. And thanks for being part of this. Thank you, Catherine. It's good to be with, with you both. Yeah. Yes. Welcome, welcome. So uh, the first question we want to address uh, in this episode, we'll have another one in another episode, but the first one is a question from a listener that we thought was really, uh, really a helpful question. Um, and again, as always, if you have a question you'd like us to address, go to enterthebible.org uh, and, and uh, send us a question. We read all the questions. We don't have time to answer them all, but we try to pick ones that um, that we think will be particularly interesting to our listeners. So here's the question. What are the top five things to know about the Bible to interpret it well? Uh, so, um, Mary. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Yes. So I have five things that I've thought about. And uh, we may, if you don't like these five, I'll get five more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a bonus. We got a bonus five. Things. Bonus episode. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, the first thing to say is you cannot break it. Um, mm. that's the first, uh, people dumber than you have read this book. And, <laughs> uh, so, so just be bold. Um, oh my God. uh, you can, you can do this. And, um, and even if you mess it up, right. It's, uh, other people have messed it up, right. We, this is, uh, we have, um, a long history of multiple interpretations and people talking back and forth, um, so you can't break the Bible. That's my first thought about it. I don't know if you want to react to that or if you want me to just soldier on into other things. No, uh, I, no, I love that. I'd love to stop and, and reflect on that for a minute. Um, I love it. I love how you said you can't, you can't break it. I do think sometimes there is like either a hesitancy to approach it because y you actually don't you don't know what you're getting into mm -hmm. so, so much. Or also I think there is a, a tendency to feel like you're not allowed to approach it with questions or concerns or problems. Like I could see people on either side of that. And that, that sort of conjured the image to me of like holding it, you know, kind of gingerly and, and in, right. a, in an afraid way. Yeah. Imagine a new baby, right. And, mm. and if you're not used to that, you, you really do wonder like uh, how does this work and and yeah. they're astonishingly resilient they they'll let you know if you know their head is lower than they like it to be or whatever sure. um so <laughs> yeah you it, this is even the the bible's even more resilient i would imagine um hmm. so you can uh, the other thing that this that i say this for is when i started reading the bible you know as a student of the bible i thought oh there's I've got to get it right. Like there's a, mm. there's an answer and I need to be able to uncover it or uh, isolate it or somehow, you know, get the right interpretation. And that was a lot of pressure to mm. put on oneself when uh, truthfully, it's much more like a conversation than a, than a um, meaning to be uncovered by the experts. Hmm. Yeah, I love that I love metaphor that. of a conversation. I think we've we've talked about that uh, in another episode of this podcast. But yeah, it's a conversation. I mean, the Bible really is a library um, as much as it is one book, right? And there's conversations between the different books, between the different voices in scripture, and an ongoing conversation uh, with interpreters through you know, more than 2,000 years of history. So yeah. Uh, and obviously between old Testament and new Testament as well. So, uh, so I, I, I'll remember that phrase though, Mary, the uh, <laughs> people dumber than you have read this. Book. 
and they've come up with yeah sometimes come i have up to with dumber ideas too you, but you know yeah yeah, yeah. just yeah. just look it's on the, the whole, internet <laughs> it's uh, yeah just read the internet yeah. uh but yeah there's um there's lots of people who have read it you're not going to break it that's great i love that what's Beautiful. what's yeah. What's your next point? Ben? The next one is uh, you're not alone in this reading. And this gets to the idea of a conversation. Uh, our colleague, Catherine, uh, uh, Fred Geyser used to talk yeah. about, imagine um, a cocktail party and you go in and there are these conversation groups and you join a conversation group for a while and you don't talk right away because you kind of get, you know, you need to get your bearings. Like, are they talking about basketball or are they talking about politics or are they talking about you know, the new tires on the pickup or whatever. And, um, and so you get your bearings and you add something and then you drift to another group and that's a different conversation. And the conversation you were in continues without you, but you're some, you know, and so there's this sense of, I mean, in religious terms, we would talk about a cloud of witnesses or, or a tradition, uh, history, you know, like how people have read this over the centuries. This shows up when we start to talk about the, what we call the Old Testament, who, which had a, of course, vibrant life uh, being read and written and, and uh, riffed on long before Jesus. And so Christians read texts in a way that's different from some of that history of tradition, but um, hopefully it's in the it's in the same party, right? It's in the same yeah, right, right, right. kind of uh, conversation. So that's the first thing I mean by you're not alone. And then I also want to say you're not alone because uh, as Christians, we confess that the spirit inspires uh, the scriptures. And oftentimes people think that means the spirit inspired the writing of them. I, I think that too. I also think the spirit inspires the reading of them. Mm. So that inspiration isn't over with. And so, you know, we, I don't know, I, I read, part of what gives me the courage to read scripture is this sense that there's a net. <laughs> I'm working with a net of, <laughs> of other people who've tried to figure this out and of the spirit who is actually trying to draw us closer to the heart of God and will help us. Uh, see what we need to see in scripture to 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 make that move. Yeah, that's beautiful too. I, uh, you're not alone. I, I'm going to put in a plug for our website. Yeah. Um, so we're uh, uh, the Enter the Bible website, which this mm -hmm. podcast is a part of, has entries, uh, has quite a few essays on every biblical book. And we're, we're coming to the end of a big revision project of those entries. And one thing that we've added to each uh, book entry is a, is a section we're calling Bible in the World, which is uh, trying to at least uh, give a taste of how this particular book has uh, been interpreted through the centuries, how it's influenced Christian theology or art or literature mm -hmm. or music. Um, and so, you know, if you're if you're curious to delve into that, um, and this is a, in no way comprehensive. There's no, there's no way you can do the history of interpretation of any biblical book in just you know ten to twenty entries. But um, but it just gives gives uh, the reader, hopefully, and the, the listener a taste of um, of how, uh, for instance, um, the Book of Isaiah. Uh, was understood and was was spoken of as a fifth gospel, right? Uh, as speaking about Christ and about you know the the events around the time of Isaiah himself. So just I, I think that's a hopefully a help uh, for those who are listening here if you want to do some more exploration. But certainly, yeah, that conversation has gone on uh, for for centuries, for millennia, really. Uh, and so uh, we can we can learn from. Uh, those who have read before us, those who have mm -hmm. interpreted before us, we may not agree with. <laughs> we probably won't agree with everything they say, but it's certainly um, certainly a rich thing to be uh, part of that conversation. And I love I love that metaphor from Fred Geyser, uh, yeah. Geyser, who is yeah. who is a retired uh, Old Testament professor from Luther and a wonderful scholar. Yeah. 
I also, I also think it helps sort of along those lines, you know, I think sometimes in our kind of individualistic society, there, there are strains where it's like, I'm just gonna kind of read the scripture on my own by myself. Yes. And as if it's not meant to be read in community together and to be interpreted in community together, um, uh, as if it's, you know, kind of self-interpreting, which there is an element where we let scripture interpret scripture, but also sometimes scripture is arguing with itself. Um, and if, if we're kind of by ourselves trying to make sense of it, we miss a lot of the depth and richness of the experience of exploring scripture um, together with other people. So that's why I think it's helpful to go to Bible studies, right? If you have one at, at, at your church or why in the Lutheran tradition and, and many traditions, you know, the, the, the preaching comes directly out of a particular text or passage of the, of the Bible so that, so that we're hearing the words and, uh, and, um, exploring and interpreting it together not just mm -hmm. alone on our on ourselves you know by ourselves so mm -hmm. absolutely and and obviously the uh your your mentioning of the holy spirit right if we mean anything by scripture surely we mean that um that the that god is at work right mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Both, as you said, uh, both in the in the composition of it, the editing of it, but also in the reading of it. Uh, and I think I think the fact that there are different voices, often, as you said, Katie, are, are at least sometimes arguing with each other, mm -hmm. um, gives us permission to to argue a bit too. Um, in fact, rabbinic interpretation of scripture is is it's mostly debate. Right? <laughs> right. If you're not <laughs> arguing, you're argument. not. Yeah. Paying attention, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. right. You're debating back and forth about how to interpret a particular passage. Yeah. No, beautiful. All right, so uh, uh, you can't break it. You're not alone. What's number three, Mer? Yeah, this gets a. Uh, um, so I wrote down the word genre, but mm -hmm. I want to say this a little differently. Um, you said it's a library. The Bible is a library. I think I would say to people, remember that the library that the uh, Bible is like an old person's attic. I mean, you can find <laughs> everything up there. Uh, it's you know, it's poetry. It's a warning. It's a blessing. It's narrative. It's a short story. If you think about something like Jonah, it's um, all all and and so what form am i looking at uh mm -hmm. um another colleague of ours mike rogness um was talking one day about the uh i think inerrancy or something he felt the need to talk to seminarians about this and uh he said you know yeah okay fine there aren't any mistakes but but still, do you think you're an actual sheep and God is leading you by actual still waters? And, you know, like that's a metaphor, right? It's a, so once you go there with the 23rd Psalm, then that, you know, you, you recognize, oh, the, the thing I'm reading helps me read it. And I guess that's what I mean by the third thing. So what are you reading and how does that, uh, that form, that genre, uh, uh, how does it help you? in the interpretation. I think that's, that's lovely. Um, and, and I feel like some people don't, some people go their whole lives without knowing this. And I don't know how that happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's probably, uh, an indictment of the way that, that we, um, teach people maybe, or assume that they know things that maybe they don't. But I remember I was teaching, uh, in, in a congregation an intro to, to the Bible, um, little, kind of adult mm -hmm. ed class. And I brought this up. I said, there's different, you know, you use the word genre, Mary. I said, there's different genres in, in the text. And so if we want to take the text seriously, we, we, we probably want to know like what we're actually looking at and what the text is trying to do, because a lot of, um, uh, a, a lot of interpretations that are maybe not helpful or don't stand up to scrutiny or whatever come because there's an error in the in in what you're uh, expecting the text to be or do that it's not trying mm -hmm. in and of itself to be or do mm -hmm. right the book of genesis is not trying to be a science textbook so if you read the book of genesis as if it were you're going to run into difficulties for example mm -hmm. 
I had a conversation this week with someone who asked me, you know, uh, there's all this stuff in the Bible about the mercy of God and then, you know, and, and the love of God. And then there's these, you know, like, God seems really angry texts. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and I'm a, uh, I know the Gospel of Matthew as well as I know anything. And there are all mm -hmm. sorts of warnings in Matthew and there's, you know, going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth and all the things. And um, he said, how can you hold those together? And uh, what popped into my head was, imagine that your child is running into traffic, right? You've got a four-year-old and you are, and, and you are running after the child, screaming at the child mm. and jerking the child's arm in a way that you would never do when you were reading a bedtime story. <laughs> like that's, <laughs> those are two really different contexts. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so much of what and I, uh, I don't. I'm shy about uh, sweeping generalizations about this book. Um, but a lot of what seems like God being really angry is uh, in the context of you know you're like gonna walk into traffic. <laughs> this is such a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, and uh, I'm warning you. You know. Yeah. Uh, so just that kind of example of your, yeah. It doesn't all mean in the same way. It doesn't, just yeah. like our words don't all mean in the same way. Yeah, I, I, uh, I love that uh, um, metaphor of, uh, of the, the, the old person's attic. I, I haven't heard that before. I think that's great. I also, I like the metaphor of a newspaper too. So there are different sections of a newspaper. I don't know what you guys do. And maybe, you know, maybe this is too old fashioned. Like maybe most people don't read the newspaper. No one does this anymore, Catherine. We, we, we get the Sunday paper from the St. Paul Pioneer Press. And the first thing I read is the comics. I don't know what that says about me, but you know, and then I'll look at the Sunday life and then I'll look at the front page, whatever. But you don't, you don't read the comic strips in the same way that you read the front page or in the same way that you read the op-ed section or whatever. Right. So knowing what it is, I think, that point is so important. Knowing what it what you're reading uh, guides your reading of it. So, you referred to the Book of Jonah as, as a short story. I think that's I think that's exactly right. It's not a historical. I I would argue. I think most scholars would that it's not a historical tale. It's kind of along the lines of a parable about mm -hmm. uh, you know how we how we treat our enemies or how God feels about our enemies. But mm -hmm. in any case, uh, that's that's a great. Um, that's a great point. So um, I, I should Can be writing this down. Wow. You're not alone. Uh, you can't break it. And genre or yeah. know yeah. what you're reading. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're looking at. Yeah. Um, uh, the fourth thing I have is uh, start with things like who, what, where, when, uh, mm. why. I mean, just of uh, uh, this is just again to demystify that I must read the Bible in a completely pious way or religious way. I mean, you can certainly pray. Uh, parts of the Bible. Uh, but when you are reading, you can, I, I love a study Bible for this reason, yeah. uh, a Bible that has some notes in the sort of about three quarters of the way down the page, there'll be some notes that tell you, well, this is also a story in another part of the Bible. You can compare those two, or this happened in a particular uh, century or something like that. And so you get a little bit of, um, just like I'm trying to orient myself to this very different world. Um, so when you don't know what else to do, does are there characters? <laughs> Can you see a beginning, a middle, and an end to this little piece of uh, scripture that you're reading? Um, if there are characters who has names, who doesn't have names, what does that seem like uh, it might mean to you? Uh, do you know any other stories that are kind of like this? How is this one different from those? Uh, those sorts of they they I think when I've taught the Bible in the parish, people uh, often want to know like what is the you know the eye of the needle is it really a a, a gate in the temple you know and I'm like I don't I don't care <laughs> uh, and no the answer is no and um, but but just you know like uh, we don't need to we're not archaeologists here as much as we're just we're just kind of looking around and noticing what we notice. And it seems like a camel going through any little space is, is pretty tough. And a needle, eye of a needle, maybe maybe we're looking at hyperbole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So, uh, so just sim- it's okay to start with simple questions, uh, mm. and you'll and you'll find some interesting things. Yeah, that's really helpful. The uh, yeah, the who, what, where, why, kind of the I don't know the English major approach or the or the mm. reporters. But I, I don't so. know what that is, but well, sort of like noticing, you know, like, yeah, noticing details. I used yeah. to talk about things like, um, you know, paying attention to characters, paying attention to time. What what kind of time markers do you see? How many days yeah. or weeks or uh, hours has does this talk about? Um, yeah, who are the characters? Who's the friends? Who's the who's the enemy? Where's the conflict? These are things that your English professor and uh, freshman English or English teacher will will direct you to, and I think they're pretty good questions for scripture as well. I just want to note for those. Uh, listeners who might, who might not like the idea of characters. We're not saying that these oh, are untrue stories. That they aren't people. <laughs> right. No, they aren't. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Peter is actually like a person and, but in a story, he functions like a character. That's a really helpful, uh, I guess, corrective. I, to, to, um, yeah, to the, yeah, my way of speaking. But no, I, I think, I think your larger point is a really good one. And, uh, Yes, we we believed we believe that Peter was a real person that that these and that Isaiah happened. was and that know, Isaiah was a, a prophet. Person. Yeah, right, right, right. but yeah, to uh, to I, I sometimes tell my students that uh, I often tell my students, especially you know first year first semester students, reading the Bible is a cross cultural experience. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I mean, you're back in first century Palestine. Or you're back in, um, you know, um, eighth century BC, right. uh, uh, Palestine, usually, often mm-hmm. in Palestine, right? Um, and and the the economy is agrarian based, and it's subsistence farming uh, or you know smallholder farming, and uh, there's no. Uh, uh, there's there's no cars, let alone internet, right? I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's just a lot of things that uh, is very different from our culture and from our time, uh, uh, both in place and in time. Um, and yet, there are some common human experiences, right? The 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 grieving of uh, yeah. a mother over her son's death, right? Or the mm-hmm. or the uh, the fear of the disciples in the locked room, or um, the the anger of Jonah, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. at being told to that that God's going to have mercy on on the the enemy, right? So so there are both commonalities and differences. But asking questions like you're suggesting, Mary, I think are helpful in um, and using a study Bible, as you said, are helpful in bridging those gaps uh, of the differences and also recognizing the commonalities. Yeah. Yes. Number I five. Number five. I got one number last five. Thing. Yeah. Number five. Five is uh, look for God mm. in the scripture. Uh, this is going out to our beloved colleague, Terry Fredheim of blessed memory. Um, yes. Yes. What is God doing where, you know, uh, I would say to students when I was teaching preaching, please give God some verbs. Uh, because God is active in these stories and seeks to be known. And uh, and so how's that happening? And sometimes it happens through means. Sometimes it, as in uh, someone else does some talking and says, thus saith the Lord, or, right. um, or other uh, events. Um, but but that's, the, that's the fifth thing is, uh, what is this piece that you're reading, whatever it is? What what does God have to do with it? I love that. That that reminds me uh, of Catherine. Do you remember when um, Ellen Davis came to Luther Seminary and she uh, gave a lecture, and then she came to our script wit class? And I remember her saying something like, "And you'll you'll have to correct me. You probably know what she what she said. Uh, you probably heard her say it before." But I remember her saying something about. Um, when you're reading with a, a hermeneutic of generosity, which which means to, to to look at look at the text generously, look at the text from the standpoint of kind of like the, where might you find God in it, and and she said some of those texts you have to like look a little bit harder for, <laughs> you know, to read them generously. But she said something about like 
try to imagine when you're reading, try to imagine, especially when you're reading like the really difficult, challenging texts, Mary, like you were kind of talking about earlier. It's like, try to imagine the circumstance in which this would come as, as good news or would sound like a word from God. What what would what sort of extreme you know circumstance would produce something like that such that it that this text that is hard for us that sounds so weird or so scary or whatever yeah what might be the circumstance in which can you use your imagination to think about what might be the circumstance in which that would actually sound like something um, from God and and try to imagine yourself in those in that situation that that was part of how she I'm probably butchering what she said, but that's what I took away from it. That it was like, that's part of how she reads generously is even and especially in those texts that are uh, uh, challenging or confusing or, or, you know, whatever. Or, or terrorizing, you know, or 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 distancing, I guess. The scary Um, ones, right? Yeah. 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 No. uh, Yeah. No, I think, I think you're remembering well. Kitty. And and yes, um, Terry would say that Terry Fredheim was there. <laughs> Another uh, colleague now, as you said, dearly departed. But uh, yeah, and I love what you said, Mary, give God some verbs, right? <laughs> if, a, if a sermon is only, you know, you should do this, you mm-hmm. should do that, whatever, uh, or, or is um, all about how, whatever, how you should feel, how you should change your attitude. That's not that's not true to the text, right? Mm. Because if anything, the text, every biblical text is about what God is up to uh, in the lives of Israel and then in the lives of the church. Uh, um, and and so looking for what God is up to uh, in the text. And sometimes, as, uh, as you said, Katie, as Ellen said, Ellen Davis, uh, it's harder to see in some texts than others. But mm-hmm. I'm remembering, uh, and this may or may not be a good example, but I'm remembering um, a student that I had many years ago now who had experienced some violence, some sexual violence in her life uh, before that. And she said, you know, in those in that time as I was healing from this, reading about uh, the story of Dinah uh, in Genesis 34 and uh, Tamar in uh, 2 Samuel, um, who were who were uh, women who were um, assaulted? Um, it helped me realize that even this experience can be brought into the life of faith. Like even this experience can be talked about if it's talked about in scripture. And it, I'll say very clearly that those events are not condoned in scripture. Right. They are in fact condemned. Right. But just the fact that those kinds of stories remain in scripture, that it's not kind of, scripture does not look at the world with rose-colored glasses, right? Um, But just knowing that um, really hard events are talked about gave her at least permission to, um, to, you know, to think about it, to talk about it in the context of of faith. Um, That, again, may not be a good example, but I, I think what you said earlier too, Mary, about, you know, Often when God is angry, <laughs> it's because the people are about to do a really dangerous or stupid or unjust thing or have already done mm-hmm. that. And so God mm-hmm. is angry about that. Um, so, you know, sometimes God sounds pretty peeved in the prophets. <laughs> Often oh, yeah. God sounds pretty yeah. peeved in the prophets. But it's when, you know, when one child of God has hurt another one or is oppressing another. So there's a. Uh, yeah, asking what is God up to uh, in this story is, is uh, or where is God in the text is a really great question there. There are lots of other things, you know, and I suppose if you had five different people give you five lists, they'd be, you know, almost different, almost all different. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some things would be overlapping, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, one of the other things one might say is if you if you're stuck somewhere like i used to try to start in genesis 1 and i would get stuck in the in the genealogies at about genesis i don't know 10 or something and i couldn't get any farther it's like n- now i would say to somebody okay if you're stuck go somewhere else <laughs> it's a big yeah, book right, 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 right. uh that's another that's at no additional charge <laughs> a oh, sixth thing the bonus the bonus <laughs> the bonus right there 
No, that's good. You you don't have to read it front to back, though. Certainly, lots of people do that. If you get stuck, skip over the really the part that you're, you're stuck on and go on, or go to the New Testament or whatever. Go back and forth, because again, it's a conversation, uh, and the voices go back and forth. Five is obviously an arbitrary number, as you said, Mary. We could uh, we could come up with a lot more, but I think the ones that you've listed are really really helpful. W- will you list them again? Uh, just yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, first you can't break it, uh, and you're not alone in the reading form matters, genre matters, uh, for how you, how you, uh, understand a text, start with questions you might start with, uh, on any other kind of literature that you were reading, uh, like, uh, what's going on and what changes from the beginning to the end and where's the conflict and who are the people? And then, um, look for God. That was beautiful. Thank you so, so much, Mary. Really appreciate that. And um, thank you, our wonderful listeners and viewers on YouTube for joining us for this episode of the Enter the Bible podcast. Remember, you can go to enterthebible.org and get lots more resources uh, and insights, um, courses, videos, commentaries on various passages, timelines, histories, pictures, blog posts, anything you could need uh, at enterthebible.org. And uh, if you're listening to this, uh, please go and uh, review this podcast um, on Apple Podcasts. It really does help. Five stars are extra special and amazing. We appreciate that. Uh, And if you're joining us on YouTube, please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.